Welcome back to the second uh, live demo of Morrison Container Handling Solution at PEC Expo Connects. Uh, due to the technical difficulties that uh, transpired today, we wanted to make sure that this content got out to all of you who registered for this, this session, which is focusing on uh, the pharmaceutical industry and how Morrison has excelled and helped our customers improve their efficiencies within that portion of, of the packaging industry. Uh, we will be sending this out to you, uh, so if there are any questions that, that happen and you're unable to uh, attend the second or the rescheduled session, please reach out to us direct uh, through the, the chat feature on Pack Expo Connects or go to our website at morrison-chs.com and reach out to us that way. Uh, we will be going through a few different videos today that are focused within that, the pharmaceutical industry uh, and specific to you. So one of the things to note is that every single thing that Morrison does is custom built and designed to order. So we don't have a model XYZ that you can choose from. Uh, it is really designed and customized specifically for your application. So that's really where we excel. Uh, we don't want to uh, you know, put you in a corner in, in regards to design. We want to make sure that everything really meets your needs. And so that's one of the things to pay attention to in all the videos that we are highlighting um, today and also throughout the rest of the week at Pack Expo Connects. One of the things in all of these videos that, that you're looking at, these are taken in our facility prior to shipping to the end customer. So note that it's a testing environment. This is something that we do with all of our machines. Uh, so you will see some things that might look a little odd as far as some extra hands, some people involved, uh, guarding that might be missing, but that's why. So that you can better see what the actual application is and you can actually see where, how the timing screws interact with uh, the different products and containers for that application. The first video that we're gonna highlight today is actually uh, something that's very relevant to all of us right now and why we are coming to you uh, today through PEC Expo Connects and not meeting direct in Chicago. Uh, these are the coronavirus test kit tubes that if you've had a, a test, you know that the swab goes uh, either into your mouth or up your nose and goes into these tubes to go to the lab. Uh, so Morrison was chosen by uh, Thermo Fisher as well as by the government as the provider, the key provider for uh, all the equipment that is automating the filling process of these tubes before it goes to the lab. Uh, so there is there is a great article that if you check on our website or check at in our um, within the information on the the virtual booth that we have with Pack Expo Connects, you can read that article. It highlights how uh, we built 16 of these systems, uh, these full line integration systems, in 20 weeks time and improved efficiency and improved throughput for uh, Thermo Fisher by, by 20,000% uh, to get their lines up and running and get the COVID test kits out to the world. Uh, so uh, please take a look at this first video. So what you see here is the start of the, the line. First, we've got the hopper elevators, which will take the product from bulk and feed them into the vibratory feeders. There are two vibratory feeders that were integrated into the line to keep up with the line speeds required. You'll notice that we've got the side shifting mechanism that will singulate the product from each lane and going back and forth between each lane to drop six containers directly into our timing screws. The timing screws will then index down into an inline filler where they are filled to the proper levels. The screws will then transition downstream into a continuous motion process. So that's the unique thing about this, this application is that it's not only indexing, but it's also continuous motion. Uh, the discharge section is continuous motion so that it can go through the inline spindle capper. The screws will transition them over to a side lug belt system, which will control, uh, control the tubes because of a, a rubber pocket insert that will help maintain proper torque levels as the, the cap is applied. Once the cap is applied, we will drop the tubes so that they're either cap leading or cap trailing, depending on the, the label that needs to be applied. And they transition to a downstream trunnion labeler. You'll notice that they, they single file quite nicely into the trunnions directly out of the Morrison system. So some of the questions that we, we commonly uh, receive are what we're going to go through right now. Uh, what's a common question that we, we normally get? So how does the trap door mechanism work in the screw area? 
The question was, how does the trap door mechanism work? Uh, so as the containers are, are coming down the line uh, from the vibratory feeder, they're single filed, and then they get, there's the side shifting mechanism uh, or, or shuttle that will grab them and put them single file kind of going in the opposite or perpendicular direction to the flow. Uh, but that will be then in line with the timing screw. So basically it would get up at a consistent pitch like so, uh, there'd be a pneumatic trap door that would pull out underneath it, and then these containers will drop directly into the timing screws. Um, because the timing screw is at a set pitch, uh, matching the pitch of the shuttle itself, and that's how we can get them into the screw and trans transport it or, or transition it down to the rest of the line. So it's a, definitely a common question and, and really a cool feature with the system itself. What other questions? What is the maximum speed you would recommend writing this application at? The question that came through was, what's the maximum speed that the system can run at? Uh, it's a little bit of a loaded question because ultimately with an indexing process, you have to look at, at what the bottleneck is. Um, in an ideal scenario, to, to run as fast as you want, you'd want to have a continuous motion machine and limit the amount of times that the system will stop or index. Uh, in this scenario, the feeding was the, the um, slowest portion of the line. Uh, so coming from the vibratory feeders, those were uh, the quote unquote bottleneck. And so based on that, we were able to adjust the Excel and the decel of the timing screws to feed uh, the rest of the line. So the line ran at about 120 a minute, uh, but the, the screws spin much faster as you'll see through the, uh, through the capping portion of the line. So I understand Morrison did the timing screw portion, but were you guys involved in the other parts of the line? So the, the question was, what exactly did Morrison do? Uh, or clarifying what Morrison's scope is. Uh, so we were, I guess, kind of the, the integrator of the system. Uh, being the container handling experts, um, we have been involved with a lot of projects, and a lot of times we are the, the key piece to the puzzle that will connect um, one machine to the next. And so that's essentially how the timing screws are used in this application. Um, because of the short timeline um, and our expertise really needed to come into play here. So we took on the integration of controlling the filler, controlling the capper, uh, controlling the, the feed mechanism. Uh, so that came through us and that's, that's why we were the integrator in this, in this solution. This application was obviously very important and you mentioned being time sensitive. Did Morrison offer any, any training for this? Uh, training and, and install um, is the question that, that came up and how, how we handled that. Uh, we do have uh, field service technicians that, that go out in the field and that did help with um, setting this up in the field and, and running it from a service install startup support. Uh, due to the, the speed that they were requir requiring for this specific application, we did have to utilize uh, some extra level technology being the HoloLens glasses and remote connectivity to be able to support it in the field just due to how many installs needed to happen at the same time. Uh, so the HoloLens glasses were a great tool that we utilized to um, be able to be here at the office in the Chicagoland area and be able to support equipment all over the world. Uh, so it's been very effective. Uh, we were able to help customers get this customer get up and running in a very, very fast state. So uh, for one of the very first lines, we shipped it on uh, Monday evening. Uh, it went overnight and was delivered on Tuesday morning and we actually had it up and running production uh, by Tuesday evening. So those of you in the packaging industry and that have dealt with installs know how crazy that is, um, how fast it needed to happen, but with the current state that we are in, um, being able to get those up and running was crucial. So we'll transition to the next video now. Uh, so this one is specifically with an ampule, uh, dealing with a product that's very unstable, unsupported uh, by itself. Uh, so very uh, a difficult uh, container to handle, and you'll see how, how we did so. What Morrison is highlighting here is the handling of an ampule. For those of you who have dealt with ampules uh, in the production environment, understand how, how challenging this product can be. Uh, the specific ampules that we have highlighted here are rounded on both the top and bottom side, so they are uh, completely unstable and could not stand up on their own. What we are, are highlighting is the timing screw to, to pick off the containers and single file them from bulk, and we twist them down to be in a horizontal format and hand off to a lug conveyor. The product is, is 
delivered to us in a tray and we provided the complete system that unloaded the the ampules from that tray and the complete conveyance system to single file that and then twist it down into that lug conveyor. The lug conveyor was used for an inspection system so we actually leave a gap in the middle of the ampule um, so we only contact it from the top and bottom side so that an inspection machine could look for uh, presence of liquid to make sure that the, the ampule itself was intact. Another thing that was unique about these ampules is they were incredibly brittle so the glass itself broke easily and the liquid that was inside was incredibly sticky. So not only were we having to, to single file the product but we also had to single file the product when the ampules themselves would stick together because of that the liquid um, breaking over time. So uh, common questions that we get with this system. Is there a process for handling broken glass if an ampule breaks? So the question was dealing with broken glass and how this system handles it. Uh, it was definitely something that we had to be prepared for. And so the product that was inside of this specific ampule was quite sticky. And so what would happen is if one of them broke in the loading process or in that mass accumulation, uh, they would kind of honeycomb or get stuck together. And so we had to be able to pull those apart, which also um, had an opportunity to create uh, breakage because of how delicate they are. Uh, within the twist system itself, we had a, a special chute that allowed that broken glass to kind of filter through and fall out so that it did not disrupt the rest of the line continuing to run. Why is the tiny screw so large in relationship to the ampule? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, the question was why was the, the timing screw so large uh, in relationship to the ampule? So you'll notice that the timing screw was quite large and the container, you know, the ampule is really quite small. Uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, in an ideal world, Morrison would want to use an infinitely large timing screw. By doing that, uh, it would allow a more vertical thread form. If you use a really small diameter screw, what ends up happening is the thread gets really laid over. And so dealing with an unstable product, it gets really laid over. So this being the, the timing screw thread, um, it, it kind of naturally will follow that path of, of the screw itself. And so by having a larger screw, we can have this, this thread form kind of get a little bit more vertical to allow better handling throughout the entire process. So that's, that's why you'll commonly see Morrison's timing screws being a, a little bit larger uh, than, than some of the other ones that are out in the field. We will go over this further in one of our timing screw live demonstrations later this week. So hope that, uh, that you sign up for that and we can talk more about that as well. How do you guys deal with uh, not having any gaps or empty pockets in the screw after they uh, take the, the ampules away? Great question. So the, the question was uh, how, how do we deal with empty pockets or gaps, trying to minimize the amount of, of empty pockets going through the system. Uh, so what we, we do here is we flood feed the screw and by doing so uh, and how wide we have the flood feed, it allows for multiple opportunities for those ampules or those containers to feed into the timing screw. And once it's inside of that timing screw pocket, we make sure that the depth of that pocket is at least 70% of the diameter of the container. So that once it's in that pocket, it stays home, if you will, and it'll transition to the next process. Um, in the video, we do highlight how we can uh, have run out or you know, the end of line scenario where we have those, those change parts, if you will, that get added to the line and force those containers into the timing screw and, and keep the, the line running without having an issue when you get to the end of the, end of the line. So uh, we'll move on to the next video uh, due to time. So this last video is actually dealing with a syringe, uh, another fairly difficult uh, product to handle. So uh, see how we do so here. What we're highlighting here is how Morrison is handling syringes. Syringes are incredibly difficult products to handle uh, just from their unique shape, uh, especially in the automation process to have a, a continuous flow and continuous motion. One of the things that was incredibly important to the consumer in this project was uh, making sure that there was no scuffing on the, on the product. And so um, what we utilized is an Eagle Belt uh, conveyance system to move the product the majority of the line. Uh, and then we hand off to an air conveyor, which allowed the product to accumulate just prior to the timing screws. One of the things that 
we had to make sure that to occur was every single pocket of the timing screw would be filled for a proper count to go to the, the next process in the line, which would be a, a, a fixture that controlled the product through um, the, the various stages of uh, curing the product inside of the syringe. Not only is the timing screw controlling the, the product itself uh, and counting it to, as it goes through, because one revolution of the screw equals one container discharged out, but it's also orienting the flange on the syringe so that it can properly feed into the fixture. So uh, what questions do we commonly get with, with this? How does the flange of the syringe get oriented? The question was, is how do the flange so this is the flange of the, of the syringe. How do we get it oriented? So you'll notice that as it was going through that video, um, or that system in the video, that they were always oriented as such to go through the next process. Um, we designed the, the rails and then the, the timing screw pocket itself to kind of capture the, the flange and make sure that it stays home and maintains that orientation as it goes through the rest of the system. So it, it gets into the design of, of the system itself. Um, I see there's three different um, syringes, and each one, obviously, they're different to each other. How do you deal with changeover running all three on one system? Great question. So changeover, we did have these different different sizes, right? So we had uh, three different sizes that we have highlighted here, at least. Um, being a, a company that, that specializes in that, we always try to make everything toolless uh, so that it is as dummy proof as, as possible. Um, we will utilize what we call our square driver. So. With this square driver, uh, we are able to make sure that changeover happens seamlessly and that you don't have to worry about the uh, operator putting a, a new set of change parts in and losing that timing. So only one way to put it on with this, um, this point here. This is not a driving uh, point, but more so a positioning point. Uh, so that those screws are going to go on the same way every single time and be able to have a seamless transition during that changeover process. So with that, we don't want to take up too much time, but again, thank you so much for, for uh, checking us out at Pack Expo Connects. Uh, hope that you'll sign up for some more live demos. Check us out at, at morrison-chs.com uh, for more videos. Uh, we appreciate you, appreciate your business, and look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you very much.